Good morning everyone! Isang uh, mapagpalang Sunday na naman po para sa ating lahat. At uh, thank you for joining us again today to our uh, Sunday worship celebration via online streaming. Uh, to my VOCC family, friends, and relatives here in the Philippines and abroad watching this video in your homes or saan man po kayo naroon, I hope everyone is safe and well. I declare blessing and protection to all of you in Jesus' name. Today's message is called, God Promise Revival to His People. At uh, before we continue, samahan niyo po muna ako sa opening prayer. Let us pray. Father God, maraming salamat once again for giving us this wonderful time and opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth in the comfort of our homes. And Lord, thank you for giving us this new medium. Lord, itong, uh, itong uh, online streaming na Lord kahit na hindi po kami makapag-fellowship physically in our churches. Lord, thank you. Thank you because we have this uh, privilege. And uh, salamat po for your protection and favor for every one of us. And Lord, uh, today as we listen to your word, we claim your wisdom. Lord, maunawaan po namin at maintindihan yung message mo sa amin today. At uh, Lord, once again, thank you po dahil meron na naman po kaming may apply sa mga buhay namin. Uh, Lord, fill us with your presence, your, your healing presence, your wisdom. And Lord, ma-enjoy po namin yung fellowship namin your word, with your word today. Salamat po, we claim this and we ask this in prayer sa iyo, Father God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so kagaya nga po ng uh, nasabi ko kanina, ang ating pong pag-uusapan today is God's promise, revival to His people. Nakakita na po ba kayo o naka-experience na po ba kayo personally ng taong nire-revive? Na, napanood nyo po sa TV or nakakita kayo nito personally sa mga hospital? Ito po yung mga taong uh, agaw buhay. And uh, praise God, dito po sa atin ngayon sa Pilipinas, mas marami na yung mga cases ng mga nare-revive, yung mga nagre-recover, yung mga gumagaling kesa po doon sa mga cases ng mga uh, namamatay. So, when we talk about revival, when you hear the word revival, ano po ang pumapasok first into your mind? Nung tiningnan ko po kay Webster uh, ang definition ng revival, ang sabi po ni Webster ay, uh, revival means to return to life, to recover life or to recover strength or to invigorate it. Now, uh, ang pag-uusapan po natin today is not the worldly revival, but godly revival. Yung pong revival that brings something into a state where it would be even better than before. Ito yung lagi natin kiniklaim. Sabi natin, we are always better than before. Mas mabuti kesa dati. Kaya nga po, alam ko hindi naman kalabisan sa Panginoon, sa biyaya, sa grace ng Lord, na kung hihilingin natin na i-restore ng Lord yung ating, yung ating buhay, yung ating pamumuhay better than before after this after this uh, pandemic, after this quarantine. Uh, do you remember one, one uh, uh, passage in the Bible in uh, book of Job, chapter 42, verse 12? Ang sabi po dito, Now the Lord bless the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. 
Now my question is, how many of you wants revival? And ano po sa palagay ninyo sa area ng buhay ninyo ngayon na kailangan ng revival? Gusto natin ng revival sa atin pong bansa, sa ating bayan, sa ating barangay, sa bawat tahanan, sa ating church, sa ating campus, sa ating health, sa ating finances, in all areas. But revival must start within us. If you are watching TV nowadays, makikita nyo po madalas na pinaflas sa mga TV screen natin itong Bible scripture na to. Pero ano nga ba talaga ang ibig sabihin sa atin ito? Sabi nga po ng iba, ito daw ay medicine sa current situation natin. So samahan niyo po ako, let us uh, read this passage in the Old Testament book in 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Is this applicable to us today? Because many wondered if this promise applies only to New Testament believers. Bago po tayo magpatuloy, meron akong question again. Is prayer is still effective today? Is God's uh, faithfulness or is still God or is still or, or is still God faithful to his promise that if we seek him first all that we need he will provide and add it unto us Alam niyo po ang sagot ko diyan my answer is yes I believe in God's timeless principle Therefore this bible scripture second chronicles 7:14 is for all who needs revival. This is not only for Jews, but also to Gentile believers who are part of God's people. The believers of Christ are God's people. We need revival. And God is looking for people to revive. But real revival needs real requirements. Alam niyo po, gustong gusto ko na kayong makasama ulit. Gusto, gusto ko na kayo maka-fellowship ulit. We love our fellowships. But we need more than a fellowship. We need a revival. But revival is a supernatural event. It is something that we cannot produce by our own efforts. It comes only by the sovereign power of God. I mean, we cannot have a revival unless the Lord gives it. So if that's the case, while we cannot produce a revival by our own efforts, we can meet the requirements set forth in the Second Chronicles 7.14. And that will make revival much more likely. Second Chronicles 7.14 is a well-known passage that is often used by preachers to talk about the subject of revival. It is a revival verse. This verse is God's promise that those who turn from their sins, yung tumalikod sa kanilang mga kasalanan, call upon God and walk in His ways, will experience a revival and blessing of the Lord. Now, this is a verse to Israel, but it speaks to every generation as well. Those who meet the conditions detailed in this verse will experience the promise mentioned in this verse. So, please hold your Bible in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So, iisa-isahin po natin ito, extract natin each 
uh, each promise, each every action needed, and yung reward ng Panginoon para sa atin. Okay, so first, it starts with, if my people. Here is the beginning of the conditions that God is looking to be met before He will act. It is clear that God is issuing a conditional promise to His people. These promises are only for those who believe and place their faith in God. God is speaking to His people and no one else. Kailangan po maintindihan natin that this is an exclusive deal that God only offers to all believers in this planet that needs revival. God has an expectation of specific things before He brings revival. Do these things and I will respond. God addresses this to His people. Believers are people of God. So the promise is for God's people. So if my people, next, who are called by my name, Mga kapatid, brothers and sisters, believers of Christ, God calls us out from among the world. We are called to be holy. Being a Christian means that we are meant to stand out from the rest of the world. We must live differently than the world because we value different things. We value an eternal promise and we value a different lifestyle. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And gusto ko rin po i-share sa inyo yung Tagalog version nito. Kaya nga mga kapatid, alang-alang sa masaganang habag ng Diyos sa atin, ako'y nakikiusap sa inyo na ialay ninyo ang inyong mga sarili bilang isang handog na buhay. Banal at kalugod-lugod sa Diyos. Ito ang karapat-dapat na pagsamba ninyo sa Diyos. Huwag kayong makiayon sa takbo ng mundong ito. Sa halip, hayaan ninyong baguhin ng Diyos ang inyong pag-iisip upang maunawaan ninyo ang kanyang kalooban. Sa gayon, magagawa ninyo kung ano ang mabuti, kalugod-lugod at ganap na kalooban ng Diyos. In order for revival to take place, revival must start within us. Ngayong umaga po, church, well, first and foremost, I must say that we must acknowledge that we have drifted away from God. Pansin niyo po, somehow, believers have drifted. Maaring hindi sila lumayo, maaring, maaring hindi nila iginibap yung kanilang faith, just drifted. Yung bang, ah, uh, Many of us have deviated from the norms, deviated from the standard, carried away by this world. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Tayong lahat na gaya ng mga tupa ay naligaw. Tayo ay tumungo sa bawat isa sa kanyang sariling daan at ipinasan sa kanya ng Panginoon ang kasamaan nating lahat. Well, gusto ko po kayong bigla, bigyan ng isang simple uh, example about drifting. Sabi ko nga po, marahil hindi naman po tayo running away from God. Maaring hindi naman natin dinideny si God. Maari din naman pong hindi natin ginigibap yung ating faith. But somehow, somewhere, 
we are drifting. Yung standard natin, yung ating Christian values ay nako-compromise. It's a very, very simple example. Uh, nowadays, wala kang ibang magawa sa bahay mo, kumain, manood, mag-social media, mag-Facebook. Diba? Ako, tuwang-tuwa ako na nakakabasa ako sa mga postings ninyo about about your testimonies about how the how God is really good to your to your families to your life uh tuwa-tuwa po ako pag nagpo-post kayo ng mga ng mga Bible scriptures pero minsan nalulungkot po ako after a while makakabasa ako ng mga posting na hindi maganda merong kaaway sometimes uh some of you are po posting mga foul words. Nasaan na yung values? Nasaan na yung Christian standard? Uh, perhaps you may not be running away from God. You're, you may not be giving, giving up your faith. Pero sometimes you are drifting. Yung, yung church attendance, alam nyo po, nung mga bata kami, ang church attendance was once mandatory. Pero ngayon, it has become optional. Yung worship, once very vibrant. Pero ngayon, para ang mga tao tired na wala nang ganang mag-worship. Ito nga, tayo po ay naka-quarantine uh, this time. Sa bahay na nga lang po tayo. Pero yung iba, wala pang time kay Lord. Hindi pa man, hindi man lang nila maibigay yung best nila kay Lord. Yung prayer and devotion, which was once our lifeline to God, it has been replaced. Yung iba, mas excited pa na abangan yung mga teleserye. Well, I'm not saying it's, it's not good. I'm not saying it's bad na ma manood tayo ng mga TV. Pero ang nangyayari po yung iba kasi mas excited pa sila na naabangan yung kanilang mga yung mga kanilang mga uh, teleseries. Yung iba mas inuuna pa yung pag ML. We have just drifted. We are just like sheep have gone astray. We have become that Bible defines as lukewarm. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, it says, I know your deeds. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. So why has happened this to the church? Alam nyo po kung bakit? Because we have been influenced by the world. We have become spiritually complacent. Masyado na tayong easy. Di ba po, lalo na pagka matagal ka ng mananampalataya, you become easy, you become complacent. So, another thing, we have got our priorities wrong. Alam nyo po, today, I call all the believers around the world who needs revival, Let's return to God. Pakisabi nga po sa, sa, sa katabi mo, balik ka na kay Lord. Amen? Let's return to a deep relationship with God again. Let's cry unto God and say, Father, grant us revival. Brothers and sisters, we are called to be, to be holy where every believer carries the responsibility for testimony. Not just the pastor or the church board, but the body of Christ. We are called to be Christ's witnesses in this world, to share His truth and boldly seek His power. Ang nangyayari po kasi, 99% what we do is self-seeking. Nakakalimutan natin what God intends us to do. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, ito po ay great 
uh, command. Ito po yung great commission para po sa ating mga believers. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, minsan po nagtatanong tayo, wala na ba akong right? Wala na ba akong karapatan na gawin ang gusto kong gawin? Well, meron naman po. You are free to do whatever things you want to do as long as it doesn't violate the will of God. Because there are borders that we do not cross. Kasi po ang buong katotohanan, the moment you surrender your life to Christ, you also surrender your right. At yung ating po mga buhay is now governed by the higher right, which is the Jesus right. Wala naman pong problema to do whatever you want to do as long as it doesn't violate the will of God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 31 verse says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We are called to be holy. And we are not only called by His name, we are known by a new name. Yung Christian name. Whenever a person comes to Christ, they are a new creation and are given the opportunity to become associated with His name. We became Christian. Daladala natin yung, yung name tag na Christian wherever we go. Ang sabi nga po sa 1 Peter 4.16, However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. Nahihiya ka ba dahil Christian ka? But praise God that you bear that name. Every single person who claims to know Jesus either leaves his name or tore his name down. Diba? Every single person who claims na siya po ay born again believer, yung pong kanyang testimony either ilif ang pangalan ng Panginoon or it tear down ang pangalan ng Panginoon. Diba sabi nga po ng Bible, resist the devil and he will flee. But my question is, are you resisting the devil or are you assisting the devil? Now the Bible speaks of the possibility and the problems associated with revival. While telling what we can have, he also tells us about what we can prevent revival. There are four problems mentioned in this verse that can prevent revival from taking place. We need to listen closely to what the Bible has to say about this matter and do whatever we need to do and not hinder us from getting what we need from the Lord. Okay? So, ano ba yung mga problems that prevent revival? First, we'll talk about yung action. Action number one, pride re prevents revival. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, ito pong praise na to deals with the area of our pride. It, it speaks of people thinking more of themselves and their abili abilities than of God. Pride says, I don't need God. Hindi ko kailangan ng Diyos. Kaya kong gawin by my own. I know best. I can do this by my own. Proud people have learned how to function without the help of God. Without the help of God. And church, God hates pride. Proverbs 8.13 To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance. Evil behavior and perverse speech. So, papaano mo ba malalaman, papaano mo ba masasabi if you have 
a pride problem. Here are the evidences of pride in a life of a person. Number one, pride refuses to listen. Again, how can you tell if you have a pride problem? Pride refuses to listen. Ito yung mga taong hindi marunong makinig. Kasi nga, tigin nila sa sarili nila, mas magaling sila. Pride refuses to listen. Number two, pride likes to talk about itself all the time. Yun pala yun. Kapag gusto mo, o gusto nitong tao na to, na siya yung laging pinupuri, yung siya yung nag-glorify, aside from God. Number three, pride has an intense desire to be noticed. Kulang sa pansin. Kulang ka ba sa pansin? Gusto nitong tao na to, center of attraction siya lagi. So that is pride. Number four, pride believes that it deserves everything it gets. Gusto nito laging merong kapalit. Number five, pride is not thankful. How can you tell if you have a pride problem? Ito yung tao hindi marunong magpasalamat. Number six, pride cannot be corrected. Ito yung taong ayaw niya ng correction. Tingin niya sa sarili niya, lagi siyang tama. Number seven, pride does not like to follow instructions. Sabi na nga, stay at home. Wala ka namang kailangan sa labas. Namamasyal ka lang. So I think that's pride. Number eight, pride exalts itself in the presence of others. It brags. Gusto niya lagi siyang bida. Number nine, pride criticizes and try to make itself look better by putting others down. Pride pala to, yung tao na, na pinagmumukha niyang masama yung ibang tao, para magmukha siyang mabuti. May kilala ba kayong ganun? And lastly, number 10, pride thinks of its own need first. Ito yung tinatawag nating selfishness. So may natutunan po ba tayo about pride? Brothers and sisters, God calls on, on His people to humble themselves. The word humble means to bend the knee, to place self under another. Sa Panginoon, a surrendered life. The truth is, pride will not allow the prideful person to bow their knee to the Lord. And God wants us to know that we are dependent upon Him for everything we have. Ito po yung tinatawag na complete dependency to God. He wants us to bend the knee to His, or to bend our knees to His authority. And that is what the people of God needs to do today. God's people need to realize that we were nothing when God found us, when He found us. We would be nothing without Him and that we can accomplish nothing apart from His power in our lives. In John chapter 15, verse 5, without me, you can do nothing, sabi ng Panginoon. If we are going to have revival, then pride prevents revival. Kailangan po yan mag-deal natin ASAP. When there is pride in your life, you are out of balance and you are a candidate for revival. Amen? A 
Action number two. The people of God are challenged to pray. Prayerlessness prevents revival. Prayer is so absolutely essential to experiencing revival. Alam niyo po, ang prayerlessness, ito po ay kamag-anak ng pride. Because prayerlessness says, hindi ko kailangan ng Diyos. Hindi ko kailangan ng tulong niya. Prayerlessness does not say, Lord, kailangan kita. Prayerlessness relies on self and refuses to lean or and refuses not to lean on Jesus alone. Prayerlessness prevents revival. Alam niyo po, it is a fact that we can pray and not have revival. Pwede naman tayong mag-pray eh, nang hindi natin kailangan ng revival. Pero hindi, hindi tayo magkakaroon ng revival apart from prayer. Prayer looks to God and says, I can't, but Lord, you can. Prayer acknowledges personal, profound dependence upon the Lord. My question is, kumusta po ba ang inyong prayer life? When we call on God from a pure heart, humble heart, we will see revival follows. So when you are lacking in prayer, you are out of balance and you are a candidate for revival. Amen? Action number three. God's people are told to seek His face. And this means misplaced priorities prevents revival. This little praise is a call for God's people to stop looking for help and purpose in every other thing in life. Wala tayong ibang aasahan kundi ang Panginoon lamang. People of God are called upon to make God their first priority and their primary focus. Tingnan niyo po ito. In book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. Makikita niyo po dito, revival does not come to people who seek revival, but revival comes to people who seek God first. Amen? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 says in uh, uh, TLB version, In everything you do, put God first, and He will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Kung magiging honest lamang po tayo today, at uh, tatanungin natin ano ba talaga ang number one priority ko sa buhay ko. Ano nga po ba? What is the number one priority in your life? Is it your job? It is your business? It is your hobby? It is your money? Or is it the Lord? When anything but God is the number one priority in your life, you are out of balance and you are a candidate for revival. When God is our first priority, the things that He cares about are the things we care about. Mahal natin kung ano ang mahal ng Diyos at ayaw natin kung ano ang ayaw ng Diyos. Kung gusto mo talagang malaman what your priorities are today, then ask yourself three questions. Okay? Number one, on what activity do you spend most of your time? Yan. 
Kung saan mo inuubos yung iyong oras at panahon, malamang-lamang yan ang priority mo. Saan mo nga ba ini-spend most of your time? Number two, on what do you spend the most of your money? Okay? Saan mo ba ginagastos o ano bang pinakakagastusan most of your finances? Order ka ng order sa Shopee, sa Lazada, ngayong nakakwarantin ka, lagi kang umuorder sa Food Panda. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Pero, kung hindi naman tayo marunong mag-share ng ating blessing, well, I think where, where you spend the most of your time, that's your priority. Kailangan po marunong din tayo mag-share ng blessing. Hindi yung gusto natin, tayo na lang laging si kapwa. Alam niyo kung sino yung si kapwa? Di ba? Tulungan ang kapwa natin. Yun po si kapwa. So, where do you spend most of your time? Where do you spend most of your money? And what do you focus your thoughts? On what do you focus your thoughts? Ano ba ang laging laman ng isip mo? Kasi kung ano ang laging laman ng isip mo, yun ang priority mo. Look at where you go. What you do and where you spend your money. Do that and you will have a good idea of your priorities in life. Saan ba nagpifit si Lord in the equation of your life? Is He in the first place? If God is not your priority, then you are out of balance. You are a candidate for revival. Misplaced priorities prevents real revival. And finally, God's people are told to turn from their wicked ways. Listen to this. Revival will never happen in your life until you let go of your sin. Sin prevents revival. We do not have revival because many Christians are just as guilty as the world. Church people sin. They drink, they steal, they lie, they cheat, they commit adultery, they engage in sexual activity outside of marriage, they carry hate in their hearts, they walk in pride, they walk in hypocrisy. So church people as, uh, are just as guilty as the world. Brothers and sisters, we are saved by grace. But grace is never a license to sin. In fact, grace empower us or empowers us to say no to sin. What we need is a season of repentance. We are good with our excuses. We are quick to justify our behavior. Pero we are slow to fall before the Lord and confess our sins and receive His forgiveness. John chapter 1 verse 9 says, First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins to God, He is faithful and just to forgive us. God is all-knowing God. Hindi po tayo nagko-confess ng mga sins natin para, para ipaalam sa Diyos na nagkasala tayo. Alam niya yun. He's all-knowing. We confess to receive God's forgiveness and for us to realize that we are sinning. And for us to turn from our wicked ways. We need revival. But revival will only come to those who get honest about their sins. Who confess them 
forsake them and turn to God with all their hearts. If we do all the actions we said in this, uh, in this message, if we humble ourselves before the Lord, if we pray, if we put Him first, if we seek His face and turn from our wicked ways, then the reward, God will hear from heaven, will forgive our sins, and heal our land. The word heal means to, to stitch back together, to repair thoroughly. And that is what we need today. We need revival. Not just to reestablish uh, to, to reestablish our losses, but godly revival. We need godly revival to bring something into a state where it would be even better than the original. Even better than before. Mas mabuti, mas maganda, mas blessed kesa dati. Amen? This morning, I believe that God has the desire to bring revival. And He's looking for people to revive. God wants to revive this nation. God wants to revive this family. God wants to revive your, your relationship. God wants to revive your finances. God wants to revive your health. But revival must start within ourselves. The only question that really remains is, meron ka bang desire to be revived? If you want to experience personal revival, today is the day to seek God. If you want this nation to see a corporate revival, today is the day to seek the Holy Spirit. If you want our nation, our community, to see a mighty outpouring of, of God's power, today is the day to seek Jesus. Are you a candidate for revival? Here is the invitation. Are you his people? Are you a believer of Christ? If not, you need to be saved. You need to come today to Jesus. Alam niyo po, there are so many things, so many things that prevents revival. Because, because of pride, because of prayerlessness, because of misplaced priorities and because sin is active. If they are in your life, you need to come today to Jesus. Would you like to see God send us revival today? The real revival. Pwede po mangyari yun. But first, we must meet his conditions. Let me bring you back to 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name, you and I, believers, children of God, Christians, we bear that name. The required actions are humble yourself. You pray. Put God first, seek Him, and turn from your wicked ways. And then the expected reward, God will hear us from heaven. God will forgive our sins, and He will heal our land. Brothers and sisters, God is looking for people to revive. He's willing. Now, the question is, do we have that desire to be revived? If you have that pride, if you have that prayerlessness, if there is sin in your life, if you have misplaced priorities, 
then you are out of balance. You need revival. You need revival. And God promised us that He will answer. And we will receive revival. We will receive healing. Hindi lang healing. Deliverance. Sabi ko nga po kanina, Lord, kung hindi man po kalabisan, we pray that you grant us not only restoration in establishing, Lord, what we have lost, but the godly revival that bring us into something better than before, better than the original, better than o mas babuti kesa dati. Pagkatapos itong quarantine na to, Lord, grant us to see the revival. Makita namin, Panginoon, Lord God, na Lord, na, na ibinalik mo na mas mabuti, mas maganda. Because we believe that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Amen. Amen. So sa ating pong pagtatapos, if you need revival, samahan niyo po ako to this prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father in heaven, the loving God, the caring God, the gracious Father. Maraming salamat, Father God, for this privilege to come to you boldly with confidence. Father, we need revival. And we believe, Father, that this revival, Lord, hindi namin ito marireceive, Lord, without your power. And we cannot produce revival by our own efforts. And we believe, Father, that apart from you, we can do nothing. Father God, we are powerless. And we acknowledge you, the higher power. And nothing is too hard for you, O Lord. Father, we ask revival. We ask revival for this nation, the Philippines. We ask revival, Lord God, for this, for this uh, uh, family. We, we ask revival for, for our church, for our uh, finances, to our, to our uh, health. Lord, we need revival. Even Panginoon, sa buong mundo, Panginoon, na, na, na Lord, dumadaan sa problema ang kagaya namin, Lord, itong COVID-19. Lord, we need revival. We believe, Father God, that you are powerful. You are the sovereign Lord. You are the sovereign God. And inaasahan namin, Panginoon, after this quarantine, Lord, by your grace, hindi mo lamang po, Panginoon, i -re establish o ibabalik yung mga nawala sa amin. Lord, gagawin mo pa na mas mabuti. Gagawin mo pa na mas maganda better than before, better than the original. Because, Lord God, you are the Almighty God. At alam namin, Panginoon, it is your pleasure in the prosperity of your people. Hindi lamang po prosperity, Panginoon, financially, but prosperity in our relationship. Prosperity, Lord God, ng aming family, ng aming health ng aming church in all areas of our lives. Father, once again, we give you praise, honor, and glory. You are the God of revival. And Lord, as you revive yung po mga, mga New Testament believers, Lord, we declare by faith that you also have the power to revive kami ng mga anak mo today. Father, we praise you, we glorify you, 
And I speak and declare, Panginoon, protection and blessing sa bawat isa po na nanonood, bawat kapatiran, Panginoon, body of Christ against, Lord God, this pandemic, against the, the contamination of this virus, itong COVID-19. Lord, matatapos kami nitong quarantine na to. Healthy, Lord God, uh, highly favored. We are blessed because we are children of the Most High God. Father, thank you po by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all and thank you. Good morning.